Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we are doing the last part of the Last of Us Leaks Legalities series. Maybe? We'll see. There might be a little bit more to this story. But as you can tell from how I've named this video, there have been significant developments on this front in the last 24 hours. More specifically, some of the folks that have gotten in trouble, have gotten strikes, have gotten copyright claims on their materials issued by Sony or Sony's proxy, Muso Limited, TNT, whatever else it might be called, have had those claims dropped very recently. I've pulled up the tweet from Heel versus Babyface says, Sony drops copyright claims on The Last of Us Part 2 leaks video. The video that was at the heart of all this, you can still access on the Heel versus Babyface site. If you are so inclined, I haven't watched it myself. If you've been following this series, you know I've been trying to avoid leaks to the best I can while also talking about the legalities of the entire situation. But Heel versus Babyface's video is currently up. The video from Just Some Guy is currently up. Uh, and I actually said, yeah, if you haven't been following it, if you haven't seen my videos, I've talked about Sony's strategies for running out the clock here to get them past opening weekend for the release of Last of Us Part Two. And he actually says in his tweet here that I've highlighted, I sent YouTube that video. That may be one of the reasons the video went live. And to which I responded, all right, good. Now I know who to blame when they shut down my channel. YouTube loves it when I say things that are potentially critical of them, even though this particular video talks about how I really feel about the issue, which is that Sony is essentially using YouTube's internal rules against them. So maybe YouTube isn't as angry as some of the other things that I've said about their terms and conditions or other ways in which they're operating with their authoritative sources, etc. If you go and you look, most of the times that I've talked about YouTube in this space, those videos have been demonetized as not advertiser friendly, even though just critiquing YouTube doesn't fall under that ambit. But I digress. The point of this is that Heel versus Babyface, Just Some Guy, have both had their videos restored for now. And that's going to be part of the question here, right? Why did this happen? Sony drops copyright claims in The Last of Us Part 2 video. Why did this happen now? Especially when if you go and you look, and I've pulled up my video, Sony Strategy, Have YouTube Run Out the Clock, it's only a couple of days ago when Heel versus Babyface was telling us that Sony was actively denying the dispute that he had placed on their copyright content ID claim. And so we've got a very interesting set of facts here. As a lawyer, I find it fascinating because what is happening here is an open question. Now, one possibility, and I think this is the one that we'd all like to have happened, is that Sony looked at what was happening with respect to its Q score or its goodwill or its marketing initiatives or what was happening with respect to every Twitter comment on everything they try to do to market this new game. And they were seeing that, hey, the leaks are bad. We didn't want the leaks out there. And I personally am very sympathetic to that position. But what we did in response to those leaks by slamming all of these different YouTube channels, many of which were very popular, some of which were smaller, and by slamming them in the way that we did, we have made a lot of people come out against us. And at the end of the day, it's the internet. So we're being silly to try to keep this information out of people's hands if they really want it anyway. So some Sony vice president wakes up one morning and says, you know what? I think this was a bad idea. I think this was a bad strategy. I know we were aggressive back when the emails were leaked about Sony Pictures, as we discussed in this very series in virtual legality. And that didn't work out so well for us because those companies had big, expensive lawyers and threatened a lot of things. But we thought we could get away with it here on YouTube and Twitter and Reddit. But a number of people kind of complained. We've lost the goodwill of at least a portion of our prospective audience. And so now we want to lift these claims. I think that that's at least reasonably likely. I think that Sony probably knows, probably knew as soon as this started happening, as soon as places like the Hoag Law YouTube channel of all places, which generally talks very positively about the gaming industry, wants to love a lot of the things that are put out there, has a lot of PlayStation products, has a lot of Naughty Dog products in my library, has come out and said, you know what? You don't have to like these guys. You don't have to like Heel versus Babyface or Just Some Guy or some of these other people that are saying things. 
but you still can come out and say, this isn't the right way to handle even conversations that maybe you don't like. You don't just use the Copyright Act as a, as a sledgehammer. You don't just use the DMCA for whatever reason you have deigned fit this morning because you are upset that you had your materials leaked. You go, you look at your security, you potentially sue the leaker, the hacker, whatever it is, but you don't just quash this information. And so I'm on that side pretty firmly. I don't necessarily agree with anything that these YouTubers have said. I don't know because I haven't listened to their leak videos, but I still defend their right to say it. And I still defend their right to not get the DMCA abused and thrown at them and have their channels and their livelihoods threatened in a way that I don't think that the law supports. So maybe, maybe Sony woke up and said that. Or maybe they said, as Heel versus Babyface and Just Some Guy have kind of posited on the internet, that these two were the most kind of litigious. They were the most ready to go out there and potentially sue Sony and get into a fight, get into the mud and have their lawyers fight their lawyers. And, you know, more respect to them. That's a heck of a fight to want to pick with a multinational corporation that can have $10,000 an hour lawyers just looking through your stuff in the discovery phase. But maybe that's the case. Maybe Sony met unexpected resistance from certain quarters and as we've talked about in this series, most definitely doesn't want to set a precedent on this score, right? Some of the stuff that they have claimed might have a certain amount of plausibility that it fell outside of fair use, but certainly with respect to the discussion items, and even at the end of the day, the screenshots, Sony doesn't want to get all the way to the end of this and have a heel versus baby face win a fair use precedent, that will then be out there and in existence for the rest of time. Sony definitely doesn't want that, and we talked about that. In my previous video about their strategy to run out the clock, it wasn't about the fact that they wanted to take you to court, right? Heel versus Babyface, just some guy said, hey, they want to take me to court, potentially. And I said, that's very unlikely. Sony wants to threaten you with court. Sony wants to threaten you with costs and expenses and legal fees and all these kinds of things. But at the end of the day, they don't want a precedent on fair use. That ambiguity helps them. And I don't think that that really changed in the last couple of days. They denied these disputes only a couple of days ago. We have here the tweet from May 13th. It's only May 16th now. And in the U.S., these videos were put back up on May 15th, two days later. And if it were really the case that they were just trying to avoid litigation, that, oh, heel versus babyface, just some guy, maybe some other places on the internet are a little bit more aggressive than we thought, there still wouldn't be a reason to just pick up their things and go and leave all these videos up. Because their strategy to kind of delay things until Last of Us were closer to release would still hold. We looked at the way YouTube works in the last video. When you submit a dispute to their claim, they have 30 days to respond. When you appeal it, they have another 30 days to respond. And if at the end of the day, now this would be a big step for them, but if at the end of the day, they then say at the end of that appeal process, another 30 days from now or from May 13th in respect of the heel versus babyface tweet, then you can issue a counter notification to YouTube. And we talked about the fact that YouTube probably needs to accept a counter before that time frame. When a video is blocked, it probably meets all the criteria for the DMCA counter notification. And YouTube probably doesn't get the benefit of a safe harbor if they make you wait for 70 days before they put your video back up. And YouTube maybe doesn't need that safe harbor, but they can't really pretend as they do with respect to the counter notification that like they need to have another 10 days from when they receive that notification and they will only accept it potentially 60 days after the initial dispute. That's all kind of outside the ambit of the DMCA. And maybe, who knows, maybe just some guy sending that video to YouTube. YouTube said that and said, you know what, that might be right. Or maybe even our internal lawyers have told us that, but we don't want to publicize that. And so we go, we talk to Sony, big copyright holder, very active on their platform. And they say, hey, you know, this isn't going so well. We don't want to get into a, a place where we're not compliant with the DMCA. You guys are being very aggressive. Maybe there was back channel conversations. But either way, if Sony wanted to just delay, litigation is not an active threat right now. So they could just delay. There was no reason to kind of pick up those content claims yesterday if it was just because they were scared of heel versus babyface and just some guys litigation possibilities and yeah 
all of this is speculation. I'm talking about three potential possibilities that I saw, and I've got one, one more left if you're keeping count at home. All of this is speculation, but this is what lawyers do. My clients get a letter that says cease and desist or else we will seek all legal remedies. And my client brings that letter to me and then we think about both what my client has done, what the potential liability is under the law that is being threatened against them or a breach of contract or whatever it might be. And then part of it is also how likely is the other side to do something? What will it cost them? What is their chance of success? How aggressive have they been in the past? We saw that Sony had sent out letters very similar to the ones that they are using for copyright strikes to the Hollywood Reporter and Variety and the New York Times when their emails got leaked with respect to the Sony Pictures controversy. So we know Sony is inclined to be very aggressive at the front end and then to do almost nothing. There weren't lawsuits about the use of those email materials. There weren't lawyers coming out of the woodwork to help defend Sony. No, the New York Times article was all about how silly Sony was being, and the New York Times was directly contributing to the Streisand effect of the contents of those emails. They took the sending of Sony's demand as a news item. So Sony's been down this road before. They've had their nose whopped by the newspaper. Uh, And so they are looking at this situation saying, we don't want to go down that road again. But they still wouldn't have had to stop yesterday. So something else might be going on. And I think that's something else you can see in this portion of the video that I've linked to from the heel versus babyface video where he talks about how he is going to appeal the rejected disputes on his content ID claims. And you can see here, right here, where it says it goes from 13 seconds to 17 minutes and 44 seconds that he's going to dispute that they have properly identified infringing material. And they clearly haven't. Uh, It's included in there. What they really want to be aimed at is the fact that he used a screenshot for the back half of the video, but they didn't aim it there. And as a matter of fact, on, in respect of the copyright strike, that's where Heel versus Babyface won his argument against YouTube. They lifted that strike. YouTube agreed that, well, the claim under the DMCA wasn't good enough because they just identified the whole video. And so if Sony knows that YouTube already thinks that kind of thing about these issues and they're already concerned about potentially defending this or having it go through and win an appeal and all these other things or go through the court system and defend their actions there, then one of the things that they probably noted was, oh, their current content ID claims have the same issue that wound up having YouTube lift their copyright strike. So what do you do with that, right? What do you do? Maybe you lift the content ID claims and maybe you bring them back targeted only at the presence of the screenshots. I think that's a strong possibility. I think it's about as likely as potentially Sony deciding that this was too harmful to their goodwill. So it winds up becoming a question of where you think Sony is at right now. But given that they denied these disputes only a couple of days ago, right? This tweet from Heel versus Babyface was only May 13th. Big corporations don't usually change their stripes in a 48-hour period to this level. They could. They absolutely could. You can have somebody higher up say, what the heck are you doing, underling? And correct this. Fix this now because I'm starting to get blowback and I don't even know why this is all happening. That can happen. Absolutely 100%. But it's rare. And so you look at a situation like this and I say, hmm, I wonder if you can expect these videos to be claimed and taken down again with more targeted time-based infringement complaints probably at the start of the next business week, right? Monday or Tuesday, and I'll be looking at it. I don't know. This is all speculation. We're trying to guess at what this giant corporation wants to do. And in all honesty, there are probably a handful of different people at the higher up echelons of this company, each of which wants to do something different. Some might want to make an example of the heel versus baby faces of the world. Some might realize that this is doing more harm than good. It's hard to say. But it's also worth noting that this isn't the only thing that Sony and Naughty Dog have been doing on this score, right? Very recently, you can see different scenarios, different situations for different people on the internet. Here's Jeremy Prime, D-Day Cobra, the head of Geeks and Gamers, that's saying, 
I sent a counterclaim on May 4th. I've heard nothing back. I've lost the ability to live stream when I didn't violate any copyright rules. I'm losing revenue because you're allowing Naughty Dog to false flag my channel. I've done everything asked of me. And this was yesterday. This was in the same time frame that just some guy and heel versus babyface got everything lifted against them. Now, Geeks and Gamers is a fairly big site on YouTube. So maybe they're making distinctions between size and not size. But it goes further, right? Because Geeks and Gamers also had strikes put up against them under the DMCA on Twitter. And Twitter is going to have different policies. It doesn't quite have the same copyright strike, three strikes and you're out concept that YouTube does. But you can again see this is from May 15th. Similarly, the quartering from a couple days ago says Naughty Dog has hit me with 21 DMCA takedowns. And again, you don't have to agree with any of these people. You don't have to agree with what they're saying about any of this stuff. But the point is, it doesn't look from the outside like Sony has just dropped this. That Sony has just suddenly become a company that says these DMCA takedown notices are putting us in a bad position. It looks far more like they're reassessing what the proper strategy is. What strategy they can use to best quash this conversation. So get rid of tweets, get rid of thumbnails that appear in those tweets, hit the quartering, hit geeks and gamers, hit the bigger sites, maybe let some of these other sites go. And maybe they honestly are at least a little bit intimidated by the heel versus baby faces and just some guys of the world saying straight up that they're going to sue them. But that would surprise me. They get a lot of lawsuit threats. Uh, Any multinational corporation gets a lot of lawsuit threats any day of the week. And YouTubers, even when prominent, aren't necessarily things that the Sonys of the world are going to be intimidated by. But something is different about these positions. Something is different. And if you actually go and you look at Jeremy Prime's uh, Twitter thread, he also talks about the fact that Musso apparently wants to communicate with him about some kind of agreement to lift the strike. Uh, And he's going to publicize that. Probably whatever they ask for is going to be something that he's not going to be too inclined to give. But we will see. We will follow that as well. So even behind the scenes, he's having communication. Sony is changing some portion of their strategy, but it's still unclear as to what. In any event, I wanted to have this video because this is a significant change in what has occurred. It didn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't make a lot of sense on the time frames that we have been evaluating these things to see that Sony has lifted some of these claims on some of the videos that they had tried to strike, had tried to block, and then disputed the actual claim against them when they those YouTubers tried to lift the block. And so something is different but I'm not quite sure it's as positive as some people on the internet want to believe. We will be following it. It will be interesting to follow, but I'm not sure that this is the end of the story. This has been Virtual Legality for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, please subscribe. We have obviously covered The Last of Us leaks and the DMCA takedown, apocalypse, epic saga, whatever you want to call it. Now, I think in eight parts, uh, and we've been enjoying it. We also talk about other things like YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, how they're reacting to the virus situation, the terms and conditions that they have. And more generally, we like to talk about pop culture, video games, movie, television, all through the lens of business and law. I'm a corporate lawyer. That's what I know. And I think we can have a better understanding of the way these news items appear, how these corporations get out there, what they choose to do by understanding that business and law just a little bit better. So please do like, subscribe, share it around, hit bells, do whatever else you are so inclined to do. If you caught us on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to us in its podcast form, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.